major changes are coming to the LA Rams, but one thing is sure, Todd Gurley will be the focal point of the offense. We will talk to the running back about what lies ahead. Now that quarterbacks are going to go 1-2 in the draft, where does that leave Joey Bosa? Here, which team canceled their interview with the Ohio State defensive end at the last minute? And New York Jets running back Matt Forte tells us what it'll be like to enter a new locker room after eight years in Chicago. This is SINF. Welcome to SI Now. It is Wednesday, April 27th, and I'm Maggie Gray. Before LA and Philadelphia bet their futures on quarterbacks, Ohio State defensive end Joey Bosa was projected as the number one overall pick. And while he's not expected to be on the board very long Thursday, yesterday we got some insight into just how many teams are interested in Bosa and which team canceled their interview with him at the last minute. So, Joey, take us through the last couple weeks and months of your life. What's been the most interesting part of this draft process? Um, interesting? I don't know. It's been really busy. Um, I mean, <clears throat> the second the second you're done with the season, you're training for the combine, and uh, then you're training for pro day, and then right after that, you're flying around the country visiting all the different teams. So it's just been really busy, um, but, but a good busy, so... It's a lot better to be visiting teams than them not flying you out. So it's been a great experience, and I'm, I'm excited the, the time's almost here. Yeah, of course, it's always better when the phone's ringing than to have it be yeah. silent. How many teams did you visit through this process? I visited seven, so um, was going to be eight, but uh, trades ended up happening, so uh, seven, only seven. Okay, so which team was it who made the trade? Were you going to go to Philadelphia or L.A.? <laughs> um, I was going to Tennessee. Ah, and Tennessee. And they uh, traded to 15. I actually woke up that day about to get ready to go to the airport, and I checked my phone and uh, went right back to sleep after that. <laughs> there you go. Saved you a trip to Nashville, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, what other teams did you go visit? Uh, started with Cleveland. I went to Baltimore, Dallas, Jacksonville, Tampa, uh, um, Chicago, San Fran. I think that's all. Okay. When you get to these teams, do you feel like they're selling you on how great their franchise is, or are you selling them on what a great asset you could be? <laughs> It's definitely more me selling myself, but they do try to obviously give a good impression and tell me all the great things about the organization and how, I mean, obviously they're selling themselves, but they're picking me, so it doesn't really matter what I think about them. <laughs> do you feel like you really get to know these teams, or is it more like speed dating? Um, it is quick. Um, some teams you have less meetings than others, so it's slower. But uh, yeah, I I feel like you get you get a chance to really sit down with the young coach, which I feel like is probably the most important meeting. Him and the head coach, of course. But uh, yeah, you get to know them. You get at least thirty to an hour with each guy, so uh, it's kind of like speed dating. Did you walk out of any of those seven places feeling like, okay, this place would be a great fit for me? Um, I felt like I really liked all my visits. Some I feel may fit me better as a player. Um, but I, I really wouldn't be upset ending up anywhere that I visited. Okay. You know that going from college to the pros, you're going to have to get your body in – particularly tip-top shape, things are going to have to change. What have you been doing to try to make sure that you're fit enough for the next level? Uh, ever since I teamed up with Metrics, they've been, they've been great. They've been sending me everything I need, pre-workout with hydration to get me ready to go. And afterwards, of course, recovery is just as important as the workout itself. So all their protein shakes afterwards to make sure I'm recovering the right way. Yeah, in what ways can you feel the difference? Um, I just feel in great shape. Uh, 
I've been working out really hard the last few weeks to try to be in the best shape as possible. And along with uh, using all my metric stuff, I feel like I'm in incredible shape. And uh, I could just see my body changing as well. You know, for pass rushers, workouts have become legendary. You see J.J. Watt working out. His workouts almost seem like they're unreal. Are you working out at that J.J. Watt level or maybe even better? <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I mean, I try. I've been really just focusing on more than weights just to be in the best shape. Because uh, after visiting all these teams, they they stress more being in football shape than being strong and they don't worry about you getting those those uh, lifts in as much as you get to go out there and do D-line drills and do a lot of running. But uh, along with the weights, I mean, along with the running and getting the shape I am, I'm making sure that I do get the weights in, of course. Uh, that's the fun part. So I try. <laughs> okay, we saw you at the Super Bowl. You had the long hair, kind of looked like surfer. Yeah. See, you now got the cut. You're ready for Thursday in the draft. Can you tell us? What kind of suit are you going to be wearing? Are you going for something flashy? You, you seem like such a low-key guy. Yeah, I'm going pretty low-key. I'm actually <laughs> going a little flashy for for my standards. Um, it's gray and shiny, but uh, it's pretty pretty basic compared to, I'm sure, what, what these other guys are going to be wearing. <laughs> we would not expect any less than for you to have some gray on that suit considering <laughs> Ohio State University. Joey Bosa, listen, congratulations and good luck on Thursday, and hopefully we'll check in with you soon. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Our thanks to Joey Bosa. There's plenty more to come on SI Now. Stick around. I'm Aaron Nagler. I'm here with Chris Burke for SI.com, breaking down the New York Jets draft. Five quick questions for you, Chris, starting with Mike McCagnan, the general manager. He's spoken about a growing the offensive line from later round picks. Who might the Jets look at in the middle rounds to bolster their offensive line? A couple of names to keep in mind in round three, round four range, I think, are, are Joe Dahl from Washington State, Joe Haig, who was Carson Wentz's starting tackle at North Dakota State. Uh, another one that probably could be pretty interesting for them is Spencer Drango, who's uh, from Baylor, played tackle there, probably kicks inside at the next level. So if you're into those mid-rounds, you want someone that maybe isn't an obvious starter but can help you at a few different spots, uh, that's certainly a guy that could do that. With Ryan Fitzpatrick still on side, could the Jets surprise us and take or even trade up for a quarterback in the first round? I've read that Paxton Lynch's name has been connected to the Jets. Does he fit what Chan Gailey does on offense? If Gailey can get out of Ryan Fitzpatrick, what he got from him, uh, I mean, I think he could do wonders for Lynch. And that's sort of the benefit of having Chan Gailey is he's got a creative offense. But yeah, I think he fits Lynch because he, can, he likes to spread it out a little bit someone who's uh, been able to groom some quarterbacks in the past and Lynch is going to take some time but I, I like that fit especially if he slides to where the Jets already are in round one. Switching over to the defensive side which area is a bigger need for this team outside or inside linebacker? Uh, well they're in, in trouble at inside linebacker I think but outside linebacker to me is the bigger need because a they need a pass rusher and b I think they'd like to get Sheldon Richardson back on the line of scrimmage as much as possible instead of playing him essentially as an outside linebacker. So for me, I think they need that pass rusher. They need that outside edge presence so they can really get back to what they want up front. Speaking of up front, what do the Jets have to get back for Muhammad Wilkerson for Jets fans to feel good about it? I think they need to get a first round pick plus something else of decent value. You know, not, not just a first and a throw in player or a first and a day three pick. I think they need to get a first and uh, something else in rounds one through three somewhere to feel decent about it. It said premier player. He's still only 26 years old. Let's say they can address the pass rush on the first day. Who is someone they can target on day two to help bolster, you know, the rush outside along the defensive front? A couple of guys who are sort of in that fringe day one, day two, uh, Kamale Correa from Boise State. Shalit Calhoun is a guy I really like out of Michigan State. Another favorite of mine in this class is Kyler Fackrell, who I think will probably be in that round two, round three range, and he can stand up, he can play in coverage, and he's got some room to develop as a pass rusher, but already shows some pretty good potential there. So I would keep an eye on him too if they want someone who can just come in and help on passing down. So there you go, Chris Burke breaking it down for us. Five quick questions on the New York Jets. I'm Aaron Nagler for SI.com.
Welcome back to SI Now. The New York Jets may still be waiting for their quarterback to sign, but no matter who is on their center, we know they'll be handing the ball off to. That is newly acquired running back Matt Forte, who is good enough to join us. Now, Matt, you said in a recent interview that walking into a new locker room would be like the first day of school, except times 10. You're an eight-year veteran, but this is only your second team. What kind of impact do you think the change in scenery will have on you? Um, a change of scenery is good sometimes, you know. Um, the impact it have on me, I would think, would be uh, a little more, little more uh, different type of motivation than before, I would say. You know, um, being in a new locker room, new team, and, uh, you know, new colors, all kind of stuff. And so continue to excel and, and prove people wrong that, you know, all the, all the knocks on 30-year-old running backs and stuff like that is... Uh, is not necessarily true for everybody. Now you stated that when you signed with the team, you were under the assumption that Ryan Fitzpatrick would be the starting quarterback. How big of a factor was having stability at that position on your decision to sign in York? Uh, it was it was a you know a, a pretty good factor. It wasn't you know the main you know reason why I signed there, but um, you know just based off of you know what Ryan did last year with those receivers and. The chemistry that he's built with Brandon and with the uh, the offense and the other receivers, you know, I feel that uh, for him to be to come back and uh, with me in the backfield and with Balao Powell in the backfield and Kyrie Robinson in the backfield as well, that we have a chance to be really good on offense and we already have a really good defense and you know I think you know them winning 10 games last year is a testament to how good Coach Bowles has been and the rest of the uh, the staff as well. And I feel like that team and our team is moving in the right direction. Okay, so you are optimistic that things will get worked out. You did sign a three-year deal with the Jets on March 9th. The very next day, March 10th, they reached deals with running backs Bilal Powell and Kyrie Robinson. Now you've been the primary back your entire career. Do you expect to get the majority of the carries next season? You know, I, I, I plan on being every down back and, and getting the bulk of the carries. But at the same time, you know, um, it does help when you can stay healthy the entire season and have people who can come in and, uh, and play as well. Uh, you know, my time, I think basically my first seven years in the league, I, I never came off the field at all. You know, last year was basically the first time uh, having somebody come in and, and step in and, and uh, you know, kind of split time. And speaking of Chicago, you made your home there. You've been a staple there for eight seasons. We know it's a business, but how did it feel <laughs> when the Bears did not offer you a contract this season? Yeah, I mean, it, it felt like, uh, you know, I was surprised actually by that. You know, I felt that they would come in low, you know, like uh, at the end of, you know, free agency and just, you know, come in low to see if I would take a hometown discount or something like that. But to not even be offered, I was like, you know, wow, that was that was surprising to me. And, uh, you know, based off of, you know, especially what I've done the past eight years and, you know, even last year, you know, I, I don't feel like I took a step back. I got, I was, um, you know, in top of the league in a, in a lot of the categories until I got injured and missed three games and still had almost 900 yards rushing. So, uh, you know, I, it was kind of surprising to me, but, you know, teams make their own decisions and they, they, they do their, their choices and, you know, players, you got to live with them. And, uh, you know, that's just, the, you know, kind of the way the, the, the NFL is, you know. Uh, the teams, they want the player to be loyal to the team, but the team does not have to be loyal to the player. Okay, well, we know that you're new to the rivalry, but Jets-Patriots can get very heated. Will any rivalry, though, compare to what you saw in Chicago with the Green Bay Packers? Yeah, I think it would. I think it will uh, compare to that. You know, I've gotten a lot of social media messages from Patriots fans mad at me for not coming there, but they can't be mad at me, you know. Uh, they didn't offer me a deal to come there. So, uh, you know, uh, I think the, uh, the rivalry between, you know, the Jets and the Patriots will get heated and it will continue to be that way, especially as, um, you know, the season comes to a close and we, I think, play them late in the season as well. Of course, what would take Jets Patriots to even a higher level would be if the Jets made the postseason, they missed the playoffs by just a game last year. The front office has done a good job in bringing in some new pieces. What is the expectation for this team as the new season begins? 
always the, the best, you know, have the best expectations for us, you know. Uh, obviously, each year to do better than you did the year, you know, previously, and they won 10 games last year and uh, unfortunately didn't make the playoffs, but I feel like uh, that was a great step in the right direction. I feel like we can continue to work from there. Matt, before we let you go, of course, the draft is on Thursday. This time of year, I'm sure, brings up a lot of memories for guys like yourself. But tell us there is a new way that we all can watch the draft this year. What is it? Yeah, so with the Verizon NFL mobile app, you can stream live coverage of the NFL uh, draft that's going on this weekend. And uh, they also have player profiles on there. So if your team drafts somebody that you may not really know, you can check out the player profile. And I use it all the time during the season. You know, we might play a game early on in the day and I want to catch some of the other games that are being played and we're traveling. Uh, I just check it out on my phone and it's only on Verizon. So that's the that's the best part. You can still catch games that you might have missed otherwise. Matt Forte of the New York Jets. It's going to take a second to get used to saying that. Matt, thank you so much for the time. We'll catch up with you soon. All right, thank you. OK, coming up next, there is more SI now right after this. Welcome back to SI Now. My next guest is the reigning NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year. He rushed for over 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns. LA Rams running back Todd Gurley is good enough to join me. Okay, Todd, we heard you were at your mother's house when you received the news that the Rams were trading up for the number one pick. Uh, what has the conversation been like between your teammates since that deal went down? Um... Yeah, I was at my mom's house and I woke up to like, you know, a bunch of calls and texts and tweets. So it was definitely um surprising, but you know, exciting and you know, me and my me and my um, teammates sit tonight and you think we're going to get a quarterback or who you think we're going to get? So, you know, we'll find out tomorrow. Of course, most people believe that you guys are going to go quarterback. A lot of people believe that Jared Goff is going to be that quarterback that goes number 1, but no matter who they take, they believe that the quarterback will have success because he can hand the ball off to you. Um, what kind of season are you capable of having if you are that focal point of the offense? Um, you know, I think the sellers are high, you know, and just depending on, you know, how hard me and my teammates work you know, this offseason, you know, it's definitely not just me. And, you know, as long as, you know, everybody is on the same page and, you know, my you know, my lineman is definitely capable of getting me there, so I'm, I'm definitely excited to, to see what, what next season stands for. Absolutely. I mean, how have the expectations changed for this team with this trade? Um, man, you know, definitely um, probably some higher expectations, but, you know, that's why I think Coach Fisher and Mr. Cena and Mr. Kroenke made the move, you know, because I guess they believe in, you know, this pick that we're getting, and, you know, it's definitely going to bring some talent in from, you know, the number one pick. Absolutely. Well, at least the team will hope so. Um, do you have any individual milestones that you want to hit this year, Todd? I don't. You know, I, I, I usually don't make, um you know, individual goals. Um, you know, I just kind of, you know, play my game, work hard, and, and let the rest handle itself. Okay. Well, we know that this trade happened the day after Kobe Bryant retired you yeah. were able to see the reaction yeah if you become a superstar in a city like LA and you win championships you can become immortal there you're a young star in LA now do you feel like you have the same opportunity um uh, probably not not that's Kobe you know that's that's a different story but um I just think it's exciting you know just being a, a young player and, and starting to get um, establish in a new city and just try to go out there, play my game, and then, you know, obviously, you know, I'll be able to make my name for myself. But, you know, I'm just, just out here to play ball and, you know, let the rest happen. It happens. I can see very deferential to Kobe Bryant. It seemed like his retirement really left an impression on you. Why is that? Oh, man, because it was Kobe. It was like, you know, I, I didn't even grow up a Kobe fan, but then I, I just recently just, like, started to, you know, respect him. 
appreciate him because I knew he wasn't going to be around but for so long. And, you know, when he retired, it was I was like, dang, man, you know, it's not going to be, you know, any more Kobe's. And then, you know, I'm playing in the city. He's been at his whole career, so it definitely makes you appreciate it a lot more. Have you ever had that kind of reaction seeing an NFL player retire, or it, does it not matter who the athlete, what sport they play, you just, you know, follow the career of the person? Um, yeah, I guess probably more the career of the person, but, you know, me, I had, I grew up, I had grew up a Ravens fan, so, uh, you know, when I seen Ray Lewis and Ed Reed retire, you know, that was kind of sad. <laughs> Sad for the team, too. <laughs> I think yeah. still uh, looking to fill a lot of those holes. Okay, we can see by your Twitter account, Todd, that you've been following uh, the NBA playoffs, but we can also tell that the draft is very important to you because it's still the avatar that you have on your Twitter account. I mean, take us back to that day, the, the drafts on Thursday. From being at the draft, you're recovering from ACL surgery to where you are now. Uh, what has this past year been like? Um, you know, it's been it's been good. You know, I love definitely wouldn't trade anything or take anything back. You know, um, definitely been a lot a lot of fun. And you know, even before the draft last year, I wasn't able to do much. But you know, I'm a lot further than what I I am now this year than I was last year. So you know, I'm just grateful to have the year that I did have. You know, Todd. We know that one thing that comes with the draft process are the reports from anonymous scouts. And I'm not sure if you heard, but today, Ohio State cornerback Eli Apple was criticized by one of these anonymous scouts because, and get this, he can't cook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's... Man, that's a lot of guys. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not just you guys. A lot of people, a lot of young people and everyone uh, yeah. might, may have trouble cooking. Did you ever feel, though, as you were going through the draft process, that you were being unfairly criticized? Um, yeah, most definitely. You know, that's, I mean, that's all you hear. You know, you hear the good, but, you, you know, it, it's hard to shy away from the bad. But, um, yeah, I mean, guys would be like, he got, he's too fragile. He gets hurt all the time. It's like I only had two injuries, but, you know, it's whatever. How do you think it's going to go down where anonymous scouts saying uh, he'll be criticized because he can't cook? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'll definitely be mad. I wonder if the scout could probably, he probably can't even cook. <laughs> now that would be the irony, right? Um, okay, of course the draft scouts are also really split on the value of running backs. All, many of them think that running backs are worth investing very high picks in. Others will say, no, you can get equitable value later on in the draft. You went number 10 overall last year. You won Offensive Rookie of the Year. Do you feel like you're helping to change the perception of a running back's value? Um, you know, I don't really think it, like, went anywhere. I mean, I'm glad to be the, you know, the first running back taken in the first round in, like, two, three years. But, you know, if I feel like if a player is good enough and he can make those plays, then, you know, the team is going to get that player. And, you know, based on, you know, their needs for the team, yeah, we know the first quarterback and the first running back off the board in the draft each year always gets a lot of attention. Um, this year, that attention is going to be for a good cause, something you're working with. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I mean, I'm here on behalf of FedEx. And last year, me and Jameis won the FedEx Aaron Ground player of the draft. And the first quarterback and running back taken this year will win it. And, you know, FedEx will also donate $2,500 to the local Red Cross chapter. Uh, each city the players are in. Certainly for a good cause. Um, all right, what's going to be the biggest change for you now moving to Los Angeles uh, from, well, Baltimore, your hometown, but then also St. Louis, where you played last year? Um, you know, it, it'll definitely be a lot different, a lot more traffic. Um, but, it, it, you know, it's definitely a bigger city, bigger market. It's, a lot, it's definitely a lot more things to do, but, you know, um, most likely when the season come in, everybody will be locked in and just enjoying the season, enjoying California. Listen, it's all about the logistics, right? Traffic. It's not yeah. fun. It's not fun for anybody. Listen, Todd, thanks so much for the time. Good luck with your move to L.A. Of course, the Rams open the season on Monday night football playing at the 49ers. Todd Gurley, thanks a lot. 
Thank you. Take care. Okay, appreciate that. Coming up next, Shaq Lawson will join us. Figure out and find out the three teams, only three, that he visited throughout this draft process. We'll be right back. Welcome back to SI Now. Clemson defensive end Shaq Lawson says he's okay with a change of scenery. Growing up in a town called Central South Carolina, Lawson chose to attend nearby Clemson University after his father died tragically in a car accident when he was in high school. But now the projected top 10 pick is looking forward to venturing out on his own. I spoke with Lawson yesterday. I'm sure you are thrilled that this is almost over, but was there one or two particular visits where you walked out of a team's facility thinking, I could be drafted here? Um, uh, all the teams were very impressed to me when I came to visit those, those, those three teams. And all the teams loved my game. So when I left out, I didn't feel, I feel like they all loved me uh, and loved what type of player I was and, what, how, what kind of character guy I you am, know, things like that. How many visits did you take? I took three visits uh, to the Cowboys, to Carolina, and, and to Chicago. We know that you stayed close to home to play college at Clemson after your father tragically died in a car accident. You grew up in a small town, played at Clemson. How would you feel if you had to leave home, leave your brothers and your sister and your mom? How would that sit with you? Uh, it's been great with me, Mom. I'm ready to move to a new city. I've been seeing Clemson all my life, so I'm ready for something new. Uh, being around Clemson is my home and things like that, but I'm just getting bored being around there. Um, I just want to see something new in life, and I'm ready to go to a big city and ready to be in the community in that big city. We know that Atlanta is only about two hours away. They've already taken three other Clemson defensemen, Goodman, Jared, and, of course, Vic Beasley. What do you think it would be like to walk into that Falcons locker room? Oh, that would be crazy. I'm only just two and a half hours away from home, uh, playing with Vic, Grady, and Malachi again, uh, just like the whole Clemson defense line before. So it would just be great. Um, you know, they got a great history of Clemson uh, getting defense line. That would just be an uh, honor to play with those guys again. You played through a shoulder injury last season. We know it was flagged in the combine to receive a medical recheck. How is your shoulder feeling now? Oh, my shoulder is great. I'm clear. Um, I sent out a video of me, a personal workout with my shoulder, uh, so teams can know where I stand and teams can have a feel. Um, the shoulder is not really, the shoulder is not bothering me. I can lift, I can bench press. Uh, I can do anything I possibly can do. Just to be 100% clear, Shaq, there's no way you're going to need any kind of surgery, even if it's minor surgery, before the season starts, right? No, ma'am, no, ma'am. I, I ain't never missed a game with Clemson. Uh, with the injury, I have, and I ain't playing no missing game in the NFL. Okay, let's move on because we know how close you are with uh, Kevin Dodd, your teammate from Clemson. And when you two were essentially – you know, riding the bench basically together for two years. Did you ever think that you'd both be likely to be selected in the first round of the draft? Um, yeah, I, I pretty much did ride the bench my first two years. I, I played behind Vic Beasley. So um, I knew I had uh, my, my freshman year. Uh, I had great nights my freshman year and sophomore year playing behind him. I knew I had an opportunity to be the one of the best in my time opportunity to come. Okay, let's talk about draft outfits. I'm not sure if you're a flashy guy in your personal life, but what can we expect from the suit? Is Clemson going to be represented on draft night? Uh, no, nah, I ain't put Clemson in a suit. Um, I just got a three-piece gray suit with pink in it and a pink uh, shirt, a navy blue bow tie. Something just uh, simple, not, not too, too crazy. Well, Shaq, uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for a few minutes, and good luck Thursday night when you find out where you'll be headed. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.
going to do it for today's episode of SI Now. We'll be back on Thursday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. New York Knicks star forward and member of the 2016 U.S. Olympic team, Carmelo Anthony, will be in the studio, as will Hall of Fame wide Andre Reid and some of this year's top NFL draft process prospects. It's a loaded show. You won't want to miss it. But until then, you can keep up with all the latest sports news on SI.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at SI Now Live. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow.